All right, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to another great episode on your number one political talk show, The Truth, with Ben Jokes. Now, what is going on within the APC right now has even gone beyond mere confusion and cluelessness. It has now entered a realm of mental disorder. What the APC have set out to do in Nigeria is like pouring water on a surface and expecting the surface not to get wet. Petrol is the driver of our economy in Nigeria. And Tinubu took the price of petrol from 195 naira to 615 naira per liter. This immediately tripled the cost of transportation across the country and the cost of production generally. But Tinubu didn't stop there. He went ahead and floated the naira. That also left a very negative impact on production and the economy. And shortly after that, Tinubu removed subsidy on electricity and companies began paying exorbitant light bills, triple what they were paying before, even though they still have to run generators because the power supply is not steady. This same government increased import duties six times in three months, knowing fully well that most of the goods we consume in Nigeria are imported. Then, the same CBN governor, Yemi Kadoso, went ahead to drastically increase interest rates. And after doing all these, in fact, by the time they were halfway through, inflation was already killing Nigerians. Many families had already disintegrated as a result of poverty. And now that the economic disaster has reached full circle, the Tinubu regime is now blaming traders in Nigeria for the inflation. They said, why are traders selling things very expensive, that they are misbehaving, traders are trying to make Nigerians suffer. And just a few hours ago, the Tinubu regime announced an economic policy that shocked the whole world, an economic policy that has never been heard of. Before I show you that policy, which according to their announcement is going to start in September and how Nigerians reacted, let me quickly show you this video. You know, the APC is fielding an illiterate as their gubernatorial candidate in Edo State. The man cannot speak in English. And because of that, he is dodging every interview. But the chairman of the APC, Edo State, came to Arise TV and began claiming that the reason their man is not granting interviews is because even if he does, the people in Edo State don't have money to subscribe or to buy data to watch the interview. Listen to this shameless old man. The chance in a dose state to be able to see this. So that's why I say that argument is not tenable. It's best your candidate should come because as you I know, speak your, now... Your, stati your, your statistics is wrong, uh, uh, Rufa. Your statistics is wrong. Give me your own. I am telling you that Give people me can no longer feed in a dough, not to talk of subscribing to internet. Give me your own statistics. People can no longer feed, not to talk of subscribing to internet. Nobody is watching you. So That's the truth. Give Nobody me, is watching you so because give, give people me your don't have money to watch. If you, no, if you, give uh, me fine. your own if statistics. If you want Stop money, you will to come to your, if you want money, you will to come to your, to, to, to your interview. Try as much as possible to subscribe for the audience, for the audience of a do, then it will really? come. Because if you okay. want to sell yourself, okay. you sell yourself to okay. the people. Okay. And if he's doing that, okay. is he going to sell himself to okay. arise? Okay. No. Hang on, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Secondly, I also want to confirm. I am telling you I, that I people are not watching please, you. Please, please. People to, are not watching you. I also you. want to confirm, Mr. Jared. Did Edo State APC at any point yes. ask arise presenter Rufayo Seni to bring $1 million to interview Mondi Okpebolo? To come and do what? We, we, we can't be saying that. <laughs> what I am telling you is, I'm just you asking. are saying people subscribe to internet. Yes, do, those people are they so, in a do? So, so we are they so, in a do? So, so, so would you with? would you respect? What why I am are you telling here? you that people don't even have money. Up, up so, Baseki, so why Baseki, are you here? Your Baseki so if has people don't watch the state to the level, okay. Because, because, if people don't, because I can afford it. If you. If you don't watch Arise, are you think... I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to... So I'm, why are you on this I'm interview? To have, I'm why supposed you to have here? my television on now. I'm supposed <laughs> to have my television on now. My television is not on because I don't have money okay. to subscribe <laughs> to a DSTV uh, that I, I can use to watch you. But I, don't people can't watch, but I don't people can't watch you based on what you have said. You heard that. He said the people of Edo State are so poor that they cannot afford to buy data 
or subscribe their DSTVs to watch Arise TV. He has forgotten that his claim is an indictment of the Tinubu regime because the federal government controls macroeconomic policies and those policies actually have more economic impact on citizens than a governor's policies. And this same APC told Rufai Hosseini to pay them $1 million if he wants to interview their candidate Monday or Kwebolo. But now, the APC chairman, Mr. Jared Tenebe, was right there on TV denying it. The APC are simply hiding their candidates because the man obviously doesn't know what to say. So the people of Edo State and by extension, Nigerians, it is over to you. It is clear that the APC is a party beyond redemption. The last time they gave us Buhari, who was dodging interviews, we saw how that ended. Tinubu was also dodging interviews and here we are. The APC is just plain evil and we cannot overemphasize the need for Nigerians to unanimously reject them if we must move forward as a nation. Point blank period. Now, let us look at the next update. The Tinubu regime is blaming traders in Nigeria for the high prices of goods. They are not blaming subsidy removal. They are not blaming the floating of the Naira, the increase in import duties, the increase in interest rates. They have left all that behind to come and blame traders in Nigeria for the inflation. And they have decided that by September, they will begin to bully Nigerian traders. Look at how the papers reported it. High cost of foodstuff. Federal government gives one month moratorium to traders to crash prices. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, has given one month moratorium to traders and other market stakeholders involved in exploitative pricing to crash the prices of goods. The newly appointed executive vice chairman of the FCCPC, Mr. Tunji Belu, said this at a one-day stakeholders' engagement on exploitative pricing on Thursday in Abuja. According to Belu, the commission will begin enforcement after the moratorium. He said that the meeting was to address the growing trend of unreasonable pricing of consumer goods and services and the unwholesome practice of market associations. Belo gave a description of the commission's finding that a fruit blender known as Ninja was being sold at a popular supermarket in Texas for $89, that is 140,000 Naira. But the same product was displayed for 994,999 Naira in a supermarket in Victoria Island, Lagos. Belo wondered the basis for the arbitrary hike in the price of the blender compared to the Texas United States of America. He said the unwholesome practices, including price fixing, was threatening the stability of the economy. Under Section 155, violators, whether individuals or corporate entities, face several penalties, including substantial fines and imprisonment if found guilty by court. This is intended to deter all parties involved in such illicit activities. However, our approach today is not punitive. I therefore call on all stakeholders to embrace the spirit of patriotism and cooperation. It is in this spirit that we are giving a moratorium of one month before the commission will start firm enforcement, he said. Bello said the government was aware of most of the problems raised by the market stakeholders. We have heard and you have genuine issues and government has the responsibility to address the problems but generally, let us talk to ourselves too. These are also gang-ups to exploit consumers by traders, he said. You heard that. You know, at the beginning of this video, I told you that these APC guys are beginning to develop mental problems. So they are going to enter the markets to dictate prices to traders. After destroying the economy, why not reduce the price of petrol? Reduce fuel price and see if prices will not drop. You don't want to play your own part, but you want things to change, right? They said traders are deliberately exploiting Nigerians. How about the National Assembly members? Are they not exploiting Nigerians? What have you done about that? How about the one that bought a private jet for 150 billion naira? Is that not exploitation? 
what have you done about that? It is traders that we should worry about. It is traders that should be bullied because they are defenseless. And look at how Nigerians reacted. Let's take some of the tweet reactions. And this tweet here by Tonya says, Petty traders should crash prices while the price of fuel keeps increasing. FG is sick in the brain. And <laughs> oh my God, Tonya is really on fire here. But it is so annoying. You expect petty traders to start dropping their prices. Meanwhile, everything you did that led to the increase in price, that led to this inflation, all those policies are still intact. You have not touched them. But you are asking traders to start dropping prices. Who, who, who does that? And this tweet here by Harriet says, This is laughable. Indices that determine prices include, number one, cost of raw materials. Number two, cost of transportation. Number three, cost of power supply. Number four, exchange rate. How come Tinubu wants traders to crash cost of commodity when your policies are anti-progress? It's sickening. I don't understand how a human being would reason like this. And that was why I said at the beginning of the video that this thing has transcended the realm of confusion. It is now tending towards the realm of insanity. And this video by Honor says, Moratorium, as if you have any power over their businesses most especially after taxing them directly and indirectly you just want to be noisy that is it they are just saying this you know to turn the public against traders because some fools who come there and say eh, traders they too they do their own too much that is just what they, you will not see them anywhere next month and this tweet here by jay for sure says fg crashed the price of petroleum products and dollar rates see if food prices will not come down that is it Go and do your own work. Go and reduce the price of petrol. Work on the dollar with production, not with all these useless methods you are using. And see if the economy will not improve. But you don't want to do the work. You just want to talk. And this tweet here by Temi Dial says, I don't understand. How does this get to happen? It can't happen. They are just trying to fool the people, to gaslight the people. And Ghani Ibrahim here says, what about the fuel? That is it. That is what Nigerians want to hear, that you have reduced the price of petrol. Not all these jokes. And this tweet here by Cornell says, and one week to crash fuel price. You are giving traders one month to crash the prices of food. And Cornell here is giving you one week to crash the price of petrol. Because that is the key to this inflation. You have not only increased it to 615, you cannot even control it. It has gone to 800, 900, over 1,000 in many areas and it is not even available. What a disaster. And Tinubu said he was going to continue from where Buhari stopped. This thing they are planning to do now was one of the things that Buhari did when the economy went out of control in his first regime. That is when he was a military man and he took over government. He got there. He didn't know what to do. He became confused and the economy came down crashing heavily. And he began to blame traders and middlemen. And he took military men to start going from shops to shops, emptying people's shops and selling their goods cheap. And that was how he destroyed many businesses. That was the economic policy that Buhari used under the military regime. An economic policy that the whole world had never heard of go into people's shops and force them to sell goods to other people at, at, at the price that you have fixed. You that does not know what is going on in the market. And that is what these guys are proposing to do. That let us talk to ourselves. And when they speak, they speak like people at, at newspaper joints. They speak like touts. Because when you go to some newspaper joints, you find people who don't know anything about the economy. You find them blaming traders. Traders are the ones making Nigerians suffer. So it, it is always very shocking when you now come to the media space and you hear government appointees saying those same things, speaking like those same touts on the streets. Then you will now know why this country is the way it is. Because the people that are giving appointments, the people at the helm are not different from the average touts on the streets. But this is the APC 
and I don't expect anything less. I keep telling Nigerians, these guys have come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Just two days ago, the Central Bank of Nigeria released a statement that businesses and households should brace up that in the coming months, inflation is going to be higher. They say there's going to be a rise in inflation. So what we are seeing now is a child's play to what is to come. I hope Nigerians will survive until that time when they will be able to come together and kick the APC out of power. But until then, make I still enter town. <laughs> Make I go get some or go and get political news where we go like. Why? Because now, because of now, now I did here. So don't go away. Don't go away.